hard to explain. Let's see. Let's see what your comp is. So you're running... Okay. So I don't really know how to classify this, but... You're basically gonna... From what I can tell just looking at this, you're gonna be wanting to clean up as many kills as your Pharah can set up. Yeah. So it's sort of like playing with a Widow. They'll be dealing the bulk of the damage and you'll just be picking off other people and harassing constantly. Uh, I generally don't happen to... Here, we'll, before we get all the way to the action, uh, before we get into it, is there anything that you know for a fact right off the bat that you know you struggled with? Yeah, this motherfucker named Javi. <laughs> what about him? Like, <laughs> he's another, just another Tracer player that's around my rank, so for whatever reason, it seems that I play against him frequently. Okay, so, so you, do you struggle with Tracer 1v1s? Yeah, yeah, I do. But okay, so Tracer so 1v1s is one. problem. And it, you'll see it later on. Are there any like other s smaller issues, or is that just like the biggest thing that you can think of? In this spot, it's the biggest thing I can think of, but they're, um, like just, I guess, holistically, I struggle with kind of like timing. Well, considering those are two of our biggest things, uh, we can we can work with that. Yeah. Let's see here. So right here, you're kind of dancing around with Discord up on you. Uh, if we go back, this little bit right here, you've got Discord, so you know Zenyatta's chilling in here. Uh, but you're you're not really poking at the tanks. You can still like you can rotate around this little pillar thing to go over there and then poke at them because then you're still breaking line of sight with uh, this doorway. Or you can do what you do, which is basically just go straight up. Uh, but you, let me see. You still do it with Discord ups. So like right as it ends, you get there in time. Uh, through here, when you're blinking from over by this May over to where you're at now, uh, you use up a lot of your blinks. So thankfully you didn't recall somewhere in there. I've seen students do that, but when you're you want to you want to conserve your blinks for when you're being targeted by people. So if we watch this bit back, you blink in, which you don't need to do, uh, and then you blink twice because you've been shot at for two damage worth. Mm -hmm. So at at this point you're down you're basically down a blink per damage taken, which isn't a spot you want to be in. You want to always engage with at least two blinks because if you have any if you have less than two then you're going to be kind of skating skating on thin ice waiting for your blinks to come off cooldown and if you get to that point then you're going to use a recall prematurely and that's that's not ever something you want to do you want you always want to have the situation as in favor for you as possible and going from point a over to point b a little faster isn't the best use of it okay yeah i know i just Trying to get in a position there. To land the yeah. So that was that was a good recall. You see that you're actually really low. That's solid. But when it puts you right back here, for recall, it's it's a really hard thing to get the hang of, but you always want to try and think about where it's gonna put you. So you were back over by the pillars, or by the little Yoda thing, however you want to call it, by the health pack. You blink over to the door behind you and then you blink over here, right? Uh, all of those blinks eat up time, obviously, and recall puts you three seconds back. So when you should know that when you're engaging back here, you're pr you might have to recall. Oh, I and see. And re recalling will put you right back here, right in the middle of everybody. And so now you do have two blinks, which is good. You're like two and a half blinks or whatever. But at this point, now the May and the Tracer are both on you. So uh, always try and plan your engagements as best you can so that when you recall, it doesn't put you back into the fight. So if we make, pretending this is like a 2D plan here, there's the fight. There's you in spot one. You don't want to go like into the fight and then out of the fight and then recall to put you back in the fight. What you want to do is you want to go into the fight and then stay in there so that when you recall, it just puts you back out instead of dumping you back in. Okay. Because your recall should basically be used to end an engagement pretty much. It's, it's like the best disengage tool ever because you get all your health back. You're totally pieced out of there. And the last thing you want to do is basically present yourself spread eagle to the team, which is sort of what happens here. It's not as I, I've seen. I've definitely seen worse. Like, I've seen people recall like into diva bombs, but <laughs> like in general rule of thumb, you do, you don't want to recall into the entire enemy team because then then you're basically like you're totally screwed because you have no recall and you're just relying on your blinks. And if you're recalling, then chances are you've used some blinks. 
Good fallback to your team. Yeah, see, so you didn't necessarily need to blink there. Uh, for melee? So if we watch this bit back. So you go for the melee. Uh, a melee should only be used if you're guaranteed to get the final blow because it takes so long for that animation to finish. And especially during a Tracer 1v1, you can pop them in cheekily, but only do it before you blink. So if you're here, she's here, whatever, you fire your clip, and then you get a melee in, and then you blink to one side. Mm -hmm. That's okay, because while this is finishing, you're going to be blinking. Okay. But if you're not planning on blinking, and you're like, like right here, you're just about to reload. So you're shooting a little bit, you get to a couple bullets, you melee, and then you need to reload after that. The melee finishing animation and then your reload animation takes so long, yeah. and that's all damage that you could be uh, dealing. Like, like right here, you blink again, and then you totally disengage. So for disengaging, uh, your team's over here, enemies are going to be over here. You're kind of in this weird no-man's land. Uh, I would be either closer to point around this general area or back up by the buildings where you were, because right here, to engage you'd have to use some of your blinks, and if you can avoid it, uh, it's best to not engage by using your blinks. Okay. It's like, you're you're definitely safe back here. You've got your Lucio with you, but, like, it's... Actually, you had to use a blink to engage there. Uh, another thing is, when you engage on them... We'll go back one more. Uh, you start on the May. Uh, your your first priority should be this Ana. Like, even if even if this Ana wasn't here... Uh, the May is not your first priority because she can ice block, and if she ice blocks, she gets back all her health, and she's basically wasted your time. So, in order of priority, it should be Anna as number one. A terrible one looks like a four. Uh, Winston's okay. number two, and then May is number three. Okay. Just because she can heal, so she's obviously, if you take her out of the equation, everybody else is in a worse spot. Winston is going to be diving on your team or dealing tons of AoE damage in whatever kind of buildings over here. And then May is just kind of going to be doing what Winston's doing, but with a lower health pool. So chipping into the Winston uh, to take him down will slow down their push more than shooting at the May. Okay. Let's see, she ice blocked and then your time's wasted. Again, you're using a lot of blinks outside of combat. Uh, you shouldn't really be using blinks to move around unless you know for a fact you're not going to need them. So like right here, you're on point and you have one blink. Mm -hmm. Again, you get back up here, you have one blink. You throw in Pulse Bomb. Uh, for Pulse Bomb, you have it. There was nobody in there, for sure. You could have taken that risk, and it looks like you did take that risk. But for Pulse Bomb, you want to treat it as like a Widow headshot, right? Because that's basically what it is. Especially now that the damage is pretty much the same. Yeah. Uh, if, you're, if your choice is between... I mean, it's, not, it's not stupid. I mean, in retrospect it is, but... <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. so, so if you have the choice of Widow headshotting a Winston or an Ana most of the time you're going to go for the Ana, unless, like, the Winston's going to die to it, right? Right. So if you can, you should stick the Ana if you can get to that point. I mean, it's not always realistic, but that should be... I mean, you get Pulse Bomb so fast that it is basically a headshot. So mm -hmm. stick it to high priority targets. Uh, if you're not 100% sure that somebody's in there, which in this case you're not, uh, I, would, I would be sure about it. I wouldn't go in there just for the sake of using your Pulse Bomb because now you blinked in through Pulse Bomb, and then blinked out. But now you're left with no blinks and, like, a third of one. <laughs> so, right. okay. uh, you're not you're not in a good, good spot here. That was another example of, look where your recall puts you. Yeah, and I probably wasn't so, low enough to actually re require it. Yeah, uh, you probably could have been topped off. Recalling here puts you right next to him. It's workable, I guess, but... You didn't really need to. It's so like right of... now. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Like, you could have recalled then. Uh, but general rule of thumb is recall to pull yourself out. Yeah, so you keep using blinks to engage. Like right now, you're at zero blinks. Again, you're at zero blinks. Okay. That's so an you... okay time. Hmm? So if I want to do approach that Anna, right? Like, if you see. Like, yeah. Like, when we know. Like, right there, you can see her shots coming in. So I know she's over there, right? Yeah. Well, as yeah. soon as this Winston dies, should I just start? Well, first of all... Like, right uh, now. Okay. So, first of all, this blink... Boop, you didn't need to use that one, right? Okay. 
So if you, if you didn't use that, uh, blinking up to an ana like that is okay, but also not okay, right? Because you blinked twice in the same direction, so blink, blink. Uh, that entire time, she could have slept you. And right. if you're blinking in a predictable way and you get slept, you'll feel real bad. So if we pretend the screen is a 2D plane, right? Uh, let's say you're here and Anna's here, right? If you do want to blink to her, uh, do like this type of a blink rather than this type of a blink. Right. Because just having this slight little bend in here, let me get a different color. Having that slight little bend makes it so that her sleep dart, if this is like the trajectory of it, only hits you in two places instead of the entire thing. So blinking up to her is okay. Uh, if you do, be sure to zigzag a tiny bit. And okay. uh, y you seem to be okay with your blink distances, but if you don't know them, like like if you're right here and you don't know where your blink will put you, like if you decide to blink in this general area, right? Uh -huh. If you think it'll put you here, that's wrong. If you think <laughs> it'll put you here, that's also wrong. So, right. uh, I've seen I've seen players who have absolutely no idea where it's going to put them, and it's basically a, like rolling the dice every time. You're okay with that? You did blink it in this corner, but everybody does that to some extent. Uh, oh, excuse me. So, but so, if I hadn't double blinked, or at least uh, just single blinked into that Winston, I'd have an extra one here. Yeah, so it wouldn't be so as big of a deal. Yeah, versus, versus an Ana, you basically want to use your blink to uh, avoid a grenade or a sleep dart. Yeah. That's that's the general gist. For Tracer, especially against single shot targets uh, like an Ana or a McCree, for example, you want to be relying mostly on just AD strafing rather than blinking. Okay. Because blinking, like if you look at this AD strafe in the middle, you're like here, 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 whatever. But in the blinks, you're like in the same predictable area. So you're really not doing much all you're doing is making someone have to track you more per blink so that's not really worth it you basically want to use it as a juke right because that's what it is it is a juke if you can strafe something basically play tracer like you don't have any blinks and then use them when you can bait something else like versus a roadhog for example excuse me you should be strafing so that he can't hit you as easily as possible and then you should blink when you're when you know for a fact he's going to land a shot on you like if this, like, this Anna's looking right at you. If she's shot right now, she might hit you. And if she were a Roadhog, you could blink out of the way to avoid the, the right-click one-tap. Right. So blink to avoid right-click one-taps, but also blink to bait out hooks. And then outside of that, just rely on strafing. You use your blinks for pretty much everything, and that always means you're at a blink deficit. So that when it comes time to need to juke something, like a Pharah rocket, if it wasn't a friendly Pharah, uh, you'd be, uh, like, kind of helpless. Interesting. Yeah, so see, you blink a lot out of combat. Like, this entire time, like, she could see you. You were kind of strafing. Yeah, so you're strafing. You blink. That wasn't strafing, and you got hit, see? So mm -hmm. now that you, you had no blinks, and you weren't strafing, and then you got punished for it. But if you're strafing that whole time, then you're building up your blinks, she can't hit you, and then you have an easy Anna kill. Okay, okay. There's Javi, that little bastard. <laughs> Yeah, see, like, so many blinks out of combat. Like, that blink, okay, fine. That gets you out of sight lines, that's okay. Yeah, so this is Zenyatta over there. I would go harass him, honestly. Which, it looks like you do. So, during that point, right? So, we'll go back a little bit. After you throw your bomb, see if you can notice something. I back out. No, it's not that you back out. You do back out, which is good. I mean, you obviously don't want to blow up from it. But <laughs> yeah. there's that entire time. It's like like three or four seconds where you're not contributing to anything, right? Mm -hmm. Bam. So now you start shooting this McCree. Now you're contributing again. Uh, do you watch Overwatch League ever? Yeah, every day. Okay, yeah. sweet. So uh, if you watch Tracers or really anybody for that matter, they're always doing something. They're either shooting, repositioning, reloading whatever they're always contributing something to the fight so like even if you're missing like 30 percent like like if you're hitting 30 percent of your shots so if your accuracy is like a little bit below average but still on par the more you shoot the more you're going to be contributing as long as you're not feeding obviously right so having downtime like that you could have been shooting this mccree longer or you could have like if you watch this back go and throw pulse bomb this isn't going to hit him right like you can see the trajectory it's not going to hit him 
So then you might as well just start shooting him, right? Or shooting, in this case, if it's a Zenyatta and an Ana, shoot the Ana first because she'd be healing the Zenyatta for more healing than it's worth. Oh, okay, okay. So taking her out of the equation makes it easier for you to kill the Zenyatta. And like, you're not going to stick him. And then you blink out of the way. You didn't really need to. You could just rotate around this little corner. And then abracadabra, you'd have two supports down. And this push would be pretty much done. Okay. So you baited out that flashbang. I don't know if you meant to or not. So you notice how you don't really blink around the McCree. I mean, A, you can't because you don't have very many. But you see how even without blinking, he didn't hit you, like, at all? Mm -hmm. Tracer's a pain in the ass to hit if she's AD strafing. Yeah. So if you can get the hang of AD strafing, then, oh, my God, you're going to pretty much live forever. And you'll notice you won't need to blink very often. You won't need to do pretty much anything. Yes, yeah, so like right there, you peace out. Your team's losing the point. The supports are still in the back. Melee when you didn't quite have to. Oof. So versus Zenyatta, right? You're discorded this whole time. We'll go back a little more. Yeah, you're kind of fucked. Boom. So you're discorded right here, right? Like, I just heard the pew. Yep. You want to play this pillar right here and these walls pretty much as much as you can to break line of sight with him so that you can get that discord orb off right so you just chill in a corner back here whatever wait for discord to go off because you know that if you blink away he's going to start charging up volley so you need to stay gone enough to the point where volley will either uh be fresh so he'll have one volley up and then engage early or wait until he has to start a new one and then engage okay. and sort of like there's like a couple seconds here and I think so I blink up right there because I just yeah, walk you... around that instead of blinking around it. Blinking around it would have been right, but he still would have tracked. It's so like going from here, blinking to like right here. That'd work, but he'd hit. So if he was still right here, right? One orb, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. seven, whatever. <laughs> yeah. He there might be one that goes there. So it's not that you didn't blink around it. It's just that you engage too early. Like he has Discord orb on you, so he can see you walking all along there, and you're here. So he knows when you walk around that corner, he can just volley you and kick you, which is okay. exactly what he does. Yeah. So you broke line of sight, and then you re-engage too early. So if you're going to break line of sight, uh, you don't know where he's at, but he knows where you're at because you can see Discord. So uh, if you break line of sight, make sure you break it long enough to get rid of Discord Orb. Okay. So the, the playing field's as even as possible. Um, I was going to say, please don't change your sensitivity mid-game. <laughs> that would be rough. Again, so right here, you've got two when you engage. That's fine. You blink. Didn't need to, obviously. I guess right there, yeah, either so should have been shooting or getting out, right? Yeah, your team's calling get out, get out. And I'm just like, even even if we go... Right here, like, you start backing away, but you don't really need to back away, back away, right? You can just play these corners, like, just play these doorways. Because you're trying to break a line of sight with Winston, and mm -hmm. that's pretty much it. You can outdistance him, but you're kiting him a little too hard. So right now, you can't really get in there to contest. You've got your Lucio here. He's, he's chilling like a villain. But you can just play around this corner and this doorway and that one over there because you ultimately need to contest for as long as you can. Your team's pretty much dead. This fight's pretty much done. Yeah, it's over. But you can, you can at least thaw it out a little bit more. Like, Winston is... Like, everyone's kind of in right now. Winston was kind of up there, kind of not. Your Lucio died... Yeah, so you shouldn't be... Yeah, you shouldn't have been up there peeking. You called the get out, and then you're still peeking. <laughs> so you're way over here, right? And I don't really know why, because they have an Anna, right? And she can poke at you from way over here, and it'll basically do the same damage as way back there. She might miss a shot because of the range, but other than that, like... You don't benefit at all from being way back here. Okay. You can't poke, 
and like if you do get up there knowing your play style you're going to use your blinks to get up there and then you're going to be in a worse situation when you get to point so like you shouldn't be at the sideline at all especially because they have a McCree and an Anna okay like you should be middle with your team right now Yes, like Anna's on point, I would go for her. <laughs> I, I hear you cry, no! So, hang on, we'll go back. For, I mean, first of all, recall, eh. You're, like, you're being healed out there. If we go back, you'll engage on the Zen, you'll get low, boom, right here. So you're at 31. And then your Lucio is right up here. He's going to start healing you up, and then you recall. It's like you're at 80 oh, when you he recall. he had just amped it, too, because it was going up fast. Yeah. And so then you oh, engage okay. on the... Like, there's this point where you go up here, you harass it there, Zenyatta. At this moment, when you start shooting at him, he knows you're here. And there's Anna, who's right over here. She also knows you're there. So this is the element of surprise, I guess. They didn't know you were here, and now they do know. You go in, you then recall, so you pop back out. And then you go back in on them again, and then you get clapped because they both know you're there. They're both ready for mm -hmm. you. And let's go back to for it uh, here. So you can see your team's right over here, right? And there's one dude over here, whatever. You need to apply pressure when there's equal pressure from your team. So if we do, we'll do another little drawing thing here. Uh, 2D plane, enemy team, your team, and then you, right? So if you're chilling in the back, you need to wait for your team to apply pressure before you do because if your team isn't doing anything then the enemy team will be like hey there's a tracer back here and they're just going to kill you and there's nothing yeah. you can do and then when your team moves in it's just going to be a 5v6 because you're done in the back right so what you did there was your team was applying pressure when you first went in on that zenyatta but when you went back in they had already backed out there's one dude over here you're, you're kind of split up right that McCree's showing up there. Like, they can all focus their attention on you, which they did, right? You got nated, you got discorded, yeah, you, yeah, got, yeah. <laughs> you got you got all sorts of claps, right? So if if there was if your your <clears throat> if your team was harassing them, then they couldn't have devoted all of that resource or all those resources to you, right? Because if Zenyatta and Anna were both turning their attention towards you uh -huh. and your team was applying pressure, then your team would be at a massive advantage because they could hop in and both of their healers are busy. Like, okay. this McCree could have died, or, like, their Winston could have died. Anybody could have died. Or he did, it looks like he did die. Does it ever work the other way around where, you know, like, if your team is ready for initiation or whatever, and you apply some sort of pressure to either a DPS or a, their supports to try to divide their attention? Yeah, that's totally workable. Uh, it's okay. just called opening a fight up. And you only want to do that, though, when you know for a fact that the entire enemy team won't turn on you. So if there's, like, we'll do another little... Uh, there right here so it's like enemy 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 there's like one back here and you're like here you don't want to apply pressure on them wait here like here we'll just redraw that uh boop 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 and then damn it whatever i'm not gonna try about <laughs> basically if you're mean. if you're in a situation where all of them can turn on you you don't want to be in that situation obviously so if you can apply pressure to one like if that zenyatta were alone then go for him. If that Anna were alone, go for her. But because their team was so close to them, you wouldn't want to open the fight up with that, unless you have a pulse bomb. Pulse bomb is the exception. You can open up a fight with a well placed pulse bomb, because that basically like that can start and end a fight before it even happens, right? Like if you're going in for a dive and your mercy gets stuck, like you you have to back out. You're done. Like you can't you can't pull that off from there right. unless there's another unless a miracle happens. So opening up a fight. Totally workable. You just have to be smart about it. Again, you over. It looks like you overthought that pulse bomb. I did. I made that way like, more complicated than it needed to be. Yeah, yeah. Like even then, right? So even if you did stick her, she's gonna totally live that pulse bomb. And your team, like aside from this doom fist, right? Your team's not here, so they're not gonna be able to follow up on that pulse bomb. And their supports are just gonna heal that off. So your pulse bomb's gone. The enemy supports are gonna get more ult off of you or off of the diva. And your team's going to have an even harder time pushing back because they're going to have nano or trance or whatever, right? So, again, it's like a headshot. You don't want to just, like, poke for no reason. Again, melee, we didn't quite have to. So, 
Slow turn on the D.Va. I thought I should just fine. be meleeing to supplement damage. Yeah, but if, if you're meleeing to supplement damage, you're actually not supplementing damage because your meleeing prolongs your reload. Mm -hmm. And the time it takes you to melee, you deal 30 damage. Uh, you deal a lot more if you were shooting for that amount of time. Oh, you saved hard. <laughs> yeah. So right there, right? We'll go back. You're playing in. A, you're playing versus a McCree in a really tight corridor. You have your Diva, so play behind your Diva. Like you don't want to play so far away that the McCree is at the advantage. But watch what you do when you go around this corner, right? Like McCree, like he didn't even have to shoot you there. He could have just punched you because there was so much uh, incoming damage on you. Mm -hmm. Like that's the time where you could melee, right? Like he was low. I would have shot as many bullets. Like if we go back. It's like, shoot, shoot. I would have meleeed there. Like, right as you got shot, I probably would have meleeed there. Okay. Because it would have been a final blow, and then it wouldn't have mattered that it takes right. a little while to reset. <clears throat> For whatever reason, this entire round, like, me and the Tracer never see each other. Like, we're never... And it feels like it's we're because never you're playing so far back, I think. Okay. Because then the next like, two... Like, your timing be... and your timing are different. Giggle pulse bomb. Ooh, widow. This doesn't last long. <laughs> I I personally hate playing widow on ruins. Like I know it's good, but like I just I hate it. I feel like there's just more effective ways to play around their widow than than unless you're good at widow, which I'm not. Yeah, so like, widows. But when everybody on all the about position, bitching about playing a widow, play the widow. Like your positioning's solid. You can't really see a whole lot here. I mean, you peek and you die. There's not a lot I can really <clears throat> tell you on that, other than like pay attention to where the enemy widow is. Like pay attention to where her bullets come from. Yeah, the biggest that... thing I've had to learn, like, and I just kind of it just started kind of sinking in recently, is that. Like, I can only be aggressive on Widow when I know that the enemy Widow's not there. You know what I mean? Like Yeah, and it's, it's the same thing for them. Like it, whatever. Yeah, so if we watch that back, I'm not going to rewind. It'd be a waste of time. But she saw where your bullet came from and then immediately rotated to get a beneficial sightline on you mm. that she could peek at her leisure. And you didn't have that luxury, right? Because you didn't pay attention to where her bullet came from. Right. So, like, for, for me, knowing when an enemy, knowing that an enemy Widow is dead... You know, we'll pause it here since I'm talking... Uh, Knowing that an enemy widow is dead means that I'm, I'm more than happy to play super aggressive, right? Because I know that I can peek a sightline and I won't get instantly clapped. Right. Uh, but the, the same thing applies where if I know where the enemy widow is, if I know that she's peeking at a certain corner, then I can be like, okay, so that's her. She's working with that sightline. If I'm out of that sightline, then I don't, I don't need to worry about her. She's basically dead. I mean, she can move around, she can rotate, obviously, but if she's in a spot where she can't see me and I can't see her. That's fine. It's like a T-Rex. Right? Okay, it's I was like, going to ask you, that a question. You, like, are you okay with that? Like, is everything good? They're like, I'm hitting shots. She can't see me. I can't see her. We'll call that good for right now. I mean, it's all right. You're, it's, it's, it's a tricky fine line to walk, right? You want, you don't want to confront her if you don't have to. However, if she's popping off, then you need to because that's your job is to counter widow and to supplement mm -hmm. damage, right? If their widow is a bigger threat than whoever you're trying to pop damage onto, she should be your number one priority. Okay. But that still that still involves keeping track of where she's at. So if you know where she's at, you can either just that's where you get the option, right? So let's we'll do it like this. It's like a little chart. So that's that's the general idea of knowing where she's at. You can go this way, which is shoot at people. You can go this way, which is like counter widow, or you can go this way, which is like swap heroes if she's in a good spot. So like You've, you've got all these options, and all of it stems from knowing where she's at. If you don't know where she's at, then all of this is done, because then you're just worried about don't die, which is basically what happens. Like, you peaked because you didn't know where she was, and she killed you. It was an incredible yeah, I, hammer I down on his... Stayed, oh, yeah. I probably stayed in that position a little too long as well. Yeah, you weren't moving around, and she was. Yeah, so see, you're out of here. You've got no blinks, no recall. If we watch that bit back, 
So you recall, it puts you back in the fight again. Pick up the health back when you're low. So we'll go back to this again. Recall, boom, you're in the fight. So like if you stop yeah, it right there. Like, so I know, like, right? So I know that the other tracer is chasing me, right? Yeah. And I also know that I'm by myself. So, yeah. but if I blink, which I've already done. So realistically, the only, per the only person on their team that can keep up with me is tracer. So yeah. once after this goes forward just a little bit, I'm going to be low on health. Do you, and out of blinks, like, do you immediately just turn around and then just try to get a lucky one clip as they walk around a corner? Or do you try yeah. to continue escaping? So the way that it should work is since so Tracer can blink in any direction, right? Like that that should be given. She blinks in the direction she's moving, but also in the direction she's looking. So if you're if you're this little dot, right, and you're walking and looking this way, you can blink in any of these four directions by just tapping. Or if you're walking in this same straight line, you can look this way and then blink in any of these directions, right? By just changing how you look. So right. What, where I'm getting with this is you should go into this health pack because you're going to want the health. You pick it up. We'll pause it when you get low. You're at 138. We missed it by like a frame, but you were at 138 HP. You pick it up. Uh, what you should be doing is immediately turning around because you know your team's back here. You know your goal is to fall back, but walking forward, you can be just walking backwards. Like it's the same speed. So you might as well be walking backwards and fighting her back because... Best case scenario, you kill her, and then you get off scot-free, and haha, that was great, right? Uh, but, like, most realistically, you either win or lose the duel, but you charge your pulse bomb more. So, if you're going to be walking back this way and dying anyway, you might as well be shooting at her the whole time. Okay. So, you pick up the health pack. Like, this whole time, you're not really doing much. Like, you can... It's sort of like having that dead space, right? Like, tracers, when they die in Overwatch League to other tracers, they're never just running. They're always, like... They can be repositioning towards their team, but they're always being aggressive while doing so. They're always fighting back. Like, you have unlimited ammo. You might as well use it. That was that looked like hardcore autopilot. My thing is, like, like, and I, I mean, I was upset when that happened, but... And then I've watched this back a few times. Like, even at, like as soon as this was over, we stopped... And then I immediately watch and it's like, I just didn't hear him. Maybe somebody was talking at the time or I was actively thinking about something else, but it's like, I'm autopiloting through a hallway, right? I'm running in a perfectly straight line through a doorway. Mm -hmm. But it's like, man, how did he even know I was there? But I mean, it's neither here nor there. I got one clip. Yeah. I mean, so I can tell it's autopilot just because of the way you're looking. Like you're not really moving your mouse around. You're walking in a straight line. Your Lucio is talking. So you're probably listening to him. Let me see if I can hear him. Yeah, no, you can't really hear him, but he's he's just alert, right? Like, he's ready for you because he knows your team's going to be moving in. He's like, okay. And you're just like, I mean, those were all headshots, so of course you're going to die really quickly. But th part of that is just be ready for anything. Mm -hmm. Like, as soon as you cross through this barricade, like, boom, you should be ready. Good recall track. Didn't need to melee. You see, you see how I, like, from that melee, right? Boom. Then you blink and then you reload all that time. Yeah. That in t that whole time you could have been killing Javi. Like you, you, you could have put him in his place if you had that time. <laughs> like your entire team's here. Like he's he's piecing out back there. Wait, now our sports are dead and it's over. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting tilted at everyone. They're like, Arcadius is calling it, dude. <laughs> The bitch in the giant mech. I love it. Yeah, whatever. We've been together for a long time, so it's a little different relationship. Nah, uh, I'm, 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 I'm the same way with my friends. Yes, yeah, like right here, you're not, you're blinking around, you're doing a lot of things. See, there you go. Now you know the widow's up there, right? So you know that widow's up there. This is exactly where you don't want to be. Like, she still has that sight line, right? Like, unless she's rotated. Really, I felt like if I stood in there, she has to like actually come to the ledge of where she's at and look down, which seems like but a you, pretty vulnerable position. Let me pause. So like, you were right here when you saw that the widow's up there, right? So you're like, okay, this is her sightline, but then you move like over this way a little bit, and then her sightline's much more open towards you. But if you stayed in this area, then she would have to look down, and hitting mm -hmm. like hitting a tracer straight it's down hard. is really hard. Yeah, it's really hard. But if you're over here, then it's a lot easier on her, especially if, 
Like if this is her sight line and you're moving around down here, it's gonna be really hard. But if you're moving this way, which is basically what you were doing, you're moving alongside this area over here, mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be a lot easier to hit you because you're just moving away from her and back towards her. I'm, I'm making like hand motions. It's a shame you can't see them. I need to get a face cam or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but uh, yeah, since you knew the Widow's up there, you should play around that as best you can by hugging this area or going on to point and chilling down here or just 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 being a pain towards her, harassing her team so she can't pick you and then she's going to get frustrated maybe. Like right here, she can totally clap you. You're using a lot of blinks outside. Glad she died. Makes me happy. Glad she... See, that's, that's what Tracer ideally can do is just go around and pick up every kill that's left over. Yeah, you're the queen of crew most of the time. Yeah, you're you're the swiffer of the battlefield. <laughs> you're a fully automatic assault swiffer. <laughs> yeah, so right here, you're you were at 129 HP, which is good. Keep in mind, you're going against the Widowmaker. You don't ever want to be below like that 120, I think. Yeah, 120 body, 25, yeah, 120. whatever. Yeah, Hanzo's 125. Solid stick. Uh, sticking Reinhardt is, like, since he died, that's good. Oof. Oof. Let's see here. Let's go back, like, to the beginning. So your target priority is kind of all over the place, right? Like, you're on the Tracer. You spend a lot of blinks again. And you give up, and you stick the Reinhardt. Another thing. Uh, you don't need to recall here. A lot of Tracers have this habit of using Pulse Bomb and then using Recall when they totally don't have to. Like, you use a lot of blinks, but you don't use blinks when you stick. Like, boom. So he's stuck, and you, you're, like, you're activating recall right here. Like, in this frame. Which is solid, because you don't need to worry about him killing you. But you're low right now. So let's see how well you are when you recall. Yeah, you're being healed, right? So with, like, all the Moira orbs and mm -hmm. Lucy and everything. You don't need these recall. Recall is pretty much... Your, your abilities should go, like, your Q. I'll just do this. So it goes Q... And then E, and then blink, right? These are your most valuable things. Use your ult whenever it's important. Use your recall whenever it'll save you. And then blink whenever you're juking. So, when you recall, when you stick someone instinctually, you're not preventing any damage. You're just getting out of the fight. And since it's your premier disengage tool, like, this is a good example of your recall puts you out of the fight, which is it's a good place to be. You don't want to recall and then have it put you right back on that Reinhardt. That would be sad. Sad day <laughs> for everybody. Getting getting blown up by your own pulse bomb. If somebody says they everybody's done, done that, it. Everybody's every, done every, it. They're lying if they say it's never happened to them. But you, you don't need to. Like, you can just blink out, and then you're safe. And then you can keep recall, and then you can contest longer, and you can just be a general pain in the ass for longer. Yo, what happened there? Did you get... Oof. Yeah, so that, that was an engage when you pretty much had no other option. You kind of needed to try and contest there. Yeah. Switch Tracer. Oh my god, Javi's throwing shade. Is it like a Tracer 1 trick? Yeah, it looks like it. Oh my god, yeah, holy. Yeah, and Hard... this is probably like the fifth game in like two days that I played against him as, you know, Tracer v. Tracer. And they were always super chill, but then, like, this time or whatever, he was just talking mad crap. <laughs> talking smack? And then he adds me as friend, and the next day he was like, sorry, I was drunk, I didn't mean to say mean things. <laughs> he was, ooh, you were losing to a drunk <laughs> I know, it man, made me feel worse. That's, that's rough, dude. He's like, oh, sorry, I was drunk. It's like, man, you should have just said you were playing your brains out. Right. Let's see, your general good spot to be. You're in a solid spot. You're on point, you don't necessarily need to be. You guys sucked in the hole. Right there? Uh, I should have blinked melee, right? Yeah, I was I was yeah. just about to say, I haven't seen you try it. Man, dude, once you learn how to blink melee, holy, you're going to feel like a god. Like, you don't even need to do it very often, but if you pull it off, like, once a day, dude, it feels so good. Like, it's it's the mo it's like a grapple shot on Widow, right? Like, once you learn how to grapple shot, you just feel like a god. Like, blink mailing is what sets apart a good tracer from a really, really good one. All right, there. Uh, we go back. Blink. 
not contributing in a position to get clapped. So you're playing you're playing Tracer in a position that you would play like Junkrat or something. Like literally your Junkrat's right here. I'm glad I said <laughs> that. Uh proves that your Junkrat's in a decent spot. So since you're pl- you're so far away from everything that's happening over here, right? Like you're not so going us. too deep. Like you don't want to be right here. That's a that that's a bad sauce. spot to be. You're in real deep. You're in a sketchy spot. Why are you mad? Moira's though? respawning. Not gonna have any support. But you're you're like you can't use this cover here, and you can't use the pillar that's like over here, right? So you're totally in this open area. Oh, excuse me. There we go. And uh, and Javi's over here chilling on like this yeah, he's side, about right? To shoot me in the side of the head. He's about to clap you. So you want to either be to a point where you're dealing maximum effective damage, or to a point where you have cover, or to a point where you're totally retreating, right? It's so, like out of Javiville, and you're in the worst of all of those worlds. Your range is too far, Javi's going to clap you, and you have no cover. It's so like if they had a Mercury over here or whatever, he could just dink you dink. Yeah, and I think as we were doing it, we were calling like to back out because our tank and healer had died, but yeah, yeah, see, that's embarrassing. <laughs> I'd like to learn it's to limit like... the amount of times I get one clipped. <clears throat> it's like right there you were walking a in a straight line b down the straightest choke on planet earth and c into the entire enemy team that knows you're there it's like you're not gonna get like if you made it through that i would have been impressed because like like just there's so many well, things i get killed kill by you. zen who's just blind firing right like he knows we're coming, i mean so yeah, like, so if he knows you're coming, then don't go that way. Like, you kn- you probably knew that he knew that you were coming. I don't know what right. that's. But, like, yeah, see? You saw her back there. You called her out. But you're not you're not doing anything about it. You're communicating a lot. You're saying a lot of things. But you're not, like, physically contributing to the game. Again, you blink straight at him. So, boom. Discorded. Go straight up. Like, you, you totally should have died. Like, I'm amazed you didn't because he had a super long time to shoot at you, straight line of sight, mm-hmm. and you blink right at him. Like, don't just don't do that. Like, if you get discorded, just try and break line of sight or just go in for the kill. Okay. Again, not contributing a whole lot here. Going for the health pack, you're totally full health. Like your team's doing the same thing too. Like your your group of buddies here is playing super passively. Right there. Uh in retrospect, you'll probably see what I'm about to point out here. Oh, I got it right before the blink. Like why blink? Why blink, not yeah. only. But also she's just standing still. Okay. Like she's not doing like you can one clip her. She has regen, but you can one clip melee. Like especially because oh, like, I got a melee. Know. She's in the air. Dude, you can mail it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you, you're standing right here. Your your character model's like not quite that tall. Like you're, I don't know. You're like that or something. You could, you don't even have to jump for that. Come on, don't kid yourself. You can, you can do that. <laughs> okay. You blink up. Like a, you swap targets between like the Arissa, the Hog, and the McCree all at once. So you're spreading it here. Do this is like a spiel that I've gotten into now. It's like I have to do a better one. Uh, I have to say this pretty much every time now, and it it applies to pretty much every hero, right? So if these are health bars. We're going to do two separate, uh, like, themes here. You can deal that much damage to that many people, or you can deal this much damage to one person. Uh, there is the A and B option, right? One of them is very correct. The other one is very <laughs> not, especially right. in this situation. I'm pre- you, should, you already know what I'm going to yeah. say here, right? Yeah. Doing the blue, like, this is so much better because this little smidgen of health, like, this little tiny smidgen here, is A, not going to get healed up by uh, this beam as easily. Uh, well, I don't know what letter I'm on now. G, whatever. G, your team can kill him so much easier because he's got, like, a bar. Like, basically, especially with the Valk beam going, any chip damage you do is going to be instantly healed off. So, like, in this situation, if we go back to the original thing here, your target priority should be as follows. One, the Valking Mercy, if you can kill her. Two, a squishy. This Korea kind of missed the arrow, and then three, getting the hell out of there because you're never gonna kill the Arista or the Roadhog because a their health pool is too big, b you're not gonna get support because of this barrier, and then c 
they've got the Valk Beam. So kill a Squishy, kill the Mercy. Don't die if you can. Let's see what happens here. Like you back away. You're you're kiting him, but he's not focusing you. It's sort of like blinking, right? Let's see. Like you're playing this far away. You're not dealing like any damage to him, and he's not even looking at you. At this point, you want to be closer to him. It's well, like with the beam right here with the beam on Arissa. Shouldn't I have just targeted her? Like her armor is about to drop in the next uh, frame. Yeah, like you should. You shouldn't have blinked back. You should be in this general area right here, right? Yeah. We're on the wrong tool, so we're just gonna have to draw a circle with that. <laughs> you yeah. should be right there. Uh, McCree is basically. We'll do another two D thing. This is my. Uh, if you if you can't tell, I've got a thing for doing like top down oh. views. Actually, here we'll do it. We'll do it even better, right? Uh, Elliot, we'll do. Well, where is a good example? All right, we'll 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 upgrade here. Boom. Okay, so if let's say boop, McCree's right there, right? We'll make we'll make tracer orange. There's there's basically two places you want to be, right? You either want to be like in this area, kind of right here, so it's just outside flashbang distance, or you want to be like way the hell out here, right? You want to be over here or like right here, because okay. anywhere in this blue range is like a place where his range is way better than yours. And he's gonna clap you. You have no way of like like your poke damage is so minimal. Your blink is gonna be too far. So if McCree's here, you just you want to be outside of flashbang range, but inside your effective range. So the butter zone is like well, we'll use a little X's here, we'll make um I don't know, we'll do pink, we haven't done pink. Like something kinda like that, right? <laughs> Okay. That that's that's the area you want to be in because you're going to be dealing the most possible damage you can, and you can bait out the flashbang, and you're you're generally mm -hmm. safe. There. Plus, it's going to be hard for him to hit you because you're such a small hitbox. And if you're really far away, your movements, uh, your movements far away translate to him moving his mouse less, so you're easier to hit. I mean, you are smaller, so that's kind of something. But up close, he has to move his mouse a lot more to try and hit right. you. So it's it's the same thing with Roadhog, right? If we clear these and pretend orange is Roadhog and he's shown like here or something, you want to be, we'll use pink again, you want to be either really, really close to him so that you're out of right click range or like here or something like that. You don't want to get right click insta tapped, but you also don't want to be left click insta tapped. So you kind of want to be in that like middle zone. Like this is like, it's just, it's too much clutter at this point. You get, you get the gist, right? Don't be too far away. Don't be too close. Yeah, and the Arisa lived through that. And I feel like I could have killed her with the beam initially. You've got pulse bomb. I was just about to say, don't stick someone. You get the Arisa as her fortifies ending. That's totally fine. Uh, meleeing him would have killed him a little faster. You got him anyway, so you're fine there. Oh, the Zen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't I? Why shouldn't I have stuck anybody? Uh, because the fight was pretty much already won. So if you okay. go back, uh. Whatever. Before again. Yeah, the fight was pretty much one, already won. Oh yeah, you could have meleeed him. Like, you're already 24 to your next bomb, but that was basically just securing the fight. Mm -hmm. You didn't, you didn't, like, that pulse bomb was kind of eh. Like, it wasn't spectacular, like, oh my god, but it also wasn't like, dude, what was that? It was, you could justify it either way. You could say, well, you didn't need to because the fight was won, or you could say that it won that fight. I'm just made it faster. Whatever floats your boat. Again, you do the same thing. Uh, you could have blink melee in there, if you get the hang of that. Oh, when I had him low. Yeah. And then he yeah, then he gets healed, and then it feels bad. Yeah, <laughs> big feels bad. I was gonna say this pretty much this entire game. You haven't been putting a lot of pressure on their healers. Yeah, I was gonna say you could stick someone there. Uh, you get the Arissa. All right, target. The problem with it is, you see what I mean. Uh, that's what I was talking about with the diva stick, right? So you stuck... Damn, we're on the wrong thing. Uh, boop. You stuck the Orisa, but she's only missing that much health now because this mercy is still a thing. Mm -hmm. So you just you just gave that mercy, however, I don't know, the conversion, say X percent of her Valk. You just gave that to her. I think what I'm trying free. to do is... Because they've been playing in a super tight like little ball, essentially. So I was like, yeah. okay, they're almost all alive. If I can throw this bomb down, um, then you're just hoping it'll get somebody. Yeah, like some sort of splash. You know what I mean? I mean, that'll yeah, yeah. Change so now that the damage gets reduced, but 
Yeah, so here's two philosophies for bomb, right? Uh, and the, you're kind of in the you're, you're like half right, but also half wrong. And I'll explain why in a second. So there's two ways you can here. We'll get extra fancy. So there's uh, oh boy, boom. Uh, there's way number one, which is dick. So there's six someone, or I mean we're getting extra fancy here. It's two or oh boy, you can throw it on the ground. We uh throw I tongue the ground, whatever. Yep. So sticking someone is a guaranteed kill, and it's it's basically guaranteed to kill one person, sometimes two, whatever. Throwing it on the ground, however, isn't a guaranteed kill, but if you're throwing it into a group, it's better to throw it onto the ground than it is to stick someone. If it's sticking someone that won't die, like if you could stick that Mercy and she's in a group, totally go yeah, for that. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's the most satisfying thing ever. You feel like a god. That's solid. But if you throw it on the ground, people aren't likely to scatter as well because it's so hard. Like, I don't know if you've noticed it, but if you're fighting and there's a pulse bomb on the ground, you don't even really know where it's at. Like, if you don't yeah. physically see it, you have no idea because the little, like, the sound effect is terrible. The, like, little triangle thing that shows up is super inconsistent. So, uh, what I'm getting at is if you throw it, if you stick it on someone, they're going to scatter away from who's stuck. In this case, the Orisa. So they scattered away from her, so she took some damage, but nobody died. If you threw it on the ground, the Mercy, like, if it was landing, like, here, right? The Mercy might have absolutely no idea that it's there and still stand, like, somewhere in this general area and then blow up to it. You know? You, you, you catch what I'm yep. putting down here? Ooh, yeah, scary Roadhog. Well, yeah, I'm just trying to get out now. Yeah, so see, you turn around. This is what you should do. Like, you're trying to disengage, so I wouldn't stay there. Again, you're, like, half right. You were disengaging, and you turned around, but you stopped disengaging. So if you stay disengaging, you can kind of do whatever you want. Yeah, see, you notice how you go in with basically a Moira ball as your dive, and you just right. kill two people. It's all about timing. So, like, that was basically the frontal pressure I was talking about. It wasn't okay. physical pressure from your team, but it was something else alongside you that helped you out. Like, they were falling back, and then you show up, and it's like, oh, God, what do we do? And in that case, the option is die. Preemptive melee, if you shot, like, two more, you would have killed her. Okay. Yeah, so maybe that was the problem in some of these duels, is that I'm trying to melee too much. Yeah, you're trying to melee too much. Uh, your positioning isn't really bad during the duels. You didn't necessarily need to recall there. Clean stick. See what I mean? It's so satisfying. Yeah. Although, after I had watched it back, I shouldn't have even done it because we had two people get sucked in the hole. So it's like, unless somehow... Yeah, I mean, you know, it's sticking It's sticking yeah. to Mercy. I can't fault you for that because you didn't really know. And I just get one clip there again. Let me watch this back. I want to see... Because his crosshair placement is pretty decent, and I want to see if yours is suffering. So I want to see where you're aiming. Like, uh, so you like stick her. Like pre-aiming, like naturally? Yeah. Yeah, like just where you keep your crosshair looking. It's so like, boom, right here. Uh, it's, you're, you're like kind of aiming at the ground, right? But yeah. if we draw like a straight line, you're aiming like at her chest and shoulders. She's aiming like work like pretty much at head level which is where you should be especially if you're going around a corner where you expect another tracer to be so you're aiming at ground level pretty much uh at like the wrong side of the doorway you should always okay. be peeking so like if you're say so you're gonna round this corner right boom you're facing in the middle of this room so that you see her over here she's kind of looking away from you too so you need to move your cursor like that far and she needs to move that far to you Mm -hmm. uh, hers is, you see how hers is a considerably shorter distance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it might be bigger on her screen. It probably is. But general rule of thumb is like, you have to also move yours like up. And she just kind of has to slide hers one way. So when you go into a room, peek a corner. So pretend, there's a lot of hypotheticals here. Pretend you're going around this door, right? If you're going to go around it, you want to keep your crosshair like here as much as possible while you're going around it. Do, we'll do another top down. This is your corner, right? You want your line of sight to look like that as you rotate right. around this door this way so that if there's anybody over here, you're prepared for it. Yeah, almost like pre-aiming. No. Yeah, what you don't want to do is you don't want to be like keeping your aim like this as you go through that door because then anybody over here is going to clap you. Anybody over here, whatever, they're going to get you anyway. But just just be smart about where you put it. Because see, like you're just adjusting to your... Your aim is adjusting while she's killing you.
Like, see, she was watching the corners. Oh, and I had Discord. I guess I never noticed that. Uh, it wouldn't have mattered. But one one thing I've been trying to work on after watching this is, like, when I blink into rooms. Like, if you blink into this mm -hmm. room, it's L-shaped, right? You, but you know, yeah. like, where you need to be looking. Like, you need to be looking at the other door. Because you should have the health yeah. locations memorized. You shouldn't need to look at the ground. So, mm -hmm. instead of, like, right there where I blinked in and then rotated like my camera you should blink and rot rotate in one flick yeah and that's what i've been trying to get better at or just do it more smoothly yeah do it more smoothly do it faster just d tracer if you get good at just doing everything the same effectiveness but just faster like that like if you can pick if you can shuck one corn right and you can shuck it at x quality and you just manage to shuck two twice as fast like you're doing the same quality of work but you're just doing more of it mm -hmm. it's a really weird analogy but like even if like if you if your accuracy doesn't improve but you're just shooting more that's still fine because you're still contributing more right i get it yeah the reason i'm paused right here is so you can see what i meant like this is the corner that she's gonna round and her crosshair is right on that corner so we skip forward like boom she's keeping it in line with this doorway so mm -hmm. that when you blink into the room it's like pop you're right here all she has to do is adjust to you coming in and you'll see it's really quick. It's like boop, it boom, it's you. Yeah, Done. it's easy. Okay. Yeah. That that's most applicable in a tracer one v one, so I'm glad that happened. Uh, it applies for pretty much everybody though. I like your call out of stay on it, nobody gets sucked. It happened like three times. I mean that's in my opinion why we lost this map. We had people get sucked in. Like two people get sucked in multiple times. I was like that's a you know free team fight for them. Yeah, you used a bunch of blinks into walls there. Yes, I did. See, that's like that's when you should melee, right? As someone's dying. There's no reason not to at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah if you right. didn't go for that health pack, you could have touched. But I told you C9 Tracer. Toxic. Toxic. Uh, but general rule of thumb, uh, if it goes between the choice of grabbing a health pack... More contesting, just test. I mean, you can hide in that corner. Uh, if we go back a little bit, uh, like right here, right? So you're a little low. You can just chill, like before you blinked here. Uh, boop. You can just chill in this little area and then tap uh, over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like you're you're running a little low, but you can chill here. Uh, go around, tap over time, and then go back to grab the health pack that's kind of to your right here. And then just just keep doing mm -hmm. that over and over for a couple seconds, and then you'll be pretty much your your goal here is to contest, right? And you're going for the super far health pack when you don't have the time, right? You maybe could have made it back to point if you had more blinks, but I mean whatever. Okay. Uh, so I'm gl that was actually not a bad game, like. Whenever I see King of the Hill games, I generally get sad because the first King of the Hill VOD a student ever sent me was uh, 99 0 They just <laughs> lost. They didn't cap point once. I'm like, it was it was like a six-minute VOD. I was struggling so hard. I think I made that session like, I think I pulled 45 minutes out of that one, and I was stretching yeah. it thin. But this was this was a solid one. It had The other thing, too, is King of the Hill and 2CP both have a lot of team fights. And a lot of downtime right. between them and like so many students just do the same thing every single fight and i'm like dude i can only give you feedback on what's basically one team fight because right. nothing yeah, changes right. like your ult economy is the same your positioning's right. the same i'm like i can't I, I can't work with that right yeah that makes sense but do you have any like finishing questions what i generally do is i type up a list of everything that a student can work on i don't know if you were taking notes or whatever i don't expect you to yeah, but i've just been recording it hope you're okay with that Nah, whatever, dude. If I if I don't want students Too to record now. it, then what, what kind of information am I giving them? Yeah. It's like no, 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 don't record it. It's all it's all shifty information anyway. No. <laughs> uh, but if you have like final questions, I can totally answer those while I'm typing this bad boy up. Uh no. I feel like we went over them as we went. I kind of had some already in my mind. Uh, did I really answer every single question? There's I no mean, way. I've watched this pod like a bunch of times. Like. <laughs> like so it, you're already familiar with it yeah like i yeah i already knew where i i mean it's just good to see somebody else's perspective and have them point out different things yeah have someone else like like i'd actually uh like i'd actually sent this video to io stuffs 
and like so we watched mm -hmm. the same one although we didn't even make it past the first match because he was so disappointed in my play but uh, uh really yeah wow why would dude that's that's sketchy man that's it, kind of a dick we move. only watched the first round but uh wow, yeah dude. i mean his big points like and i do better about it in the second and third rounds but in the first round about um, similar to what you touched on about, like, just not doing anything. Like, large portions of time where, like, n nothing... Like, I'm not doing anything, and I'm not putting myself in a position to do something. So, you know, you're basically not in the game at that point. There's a fair amount of that, and then, like, not using... Like, not being aggressive enough to get into position. Yeah. Thank you. 